All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. I have my really super duper long 17 putting away video to do. Um, it's a lot of stuff. <laughs> so I recommend you, like I did, make a really big cup of coffee, sit down, strap in, because it's going to be a 50 minute long, probably solo podcast of me talking about my 17 collection and like acquiring stuff. Um, also, sorry in advance if you hear any dog tag jinglings or general dog sounds. I have two dogs that are pretty much always glued to my side, and this is around the time of day they decide to play. So who knows what they're going to do? Um, so as you can see, this is a ton of stuff. So I have plenty of photo cards, which both are album photo cards as well as non-album photo cards, some season's greetings, and other general Seventeen fan goods. Um, so yes, this is a lot of stuff <laughs> and this was acquired over the course of several months through Mercari, um, buyings, friends buying stuff and like me being like, Hey, can you toss this in your Mercari order for me and some general stuff on Depop. So I'm going to first start off with my Joshua stuff. Um, as I mentioned in my Mercari haul and in my, um, Pentagon video, I mentioned that Joshua Hong is my 17 ult. Um, I was really excited to get this card because this was one of my favorite looks of his from the semicolon era, and he had lovely blonde hair, and I mentioned in my uh, Mercari haul that I'm trying to collect all physical and official evidence of the blonde Joshua moment because I think he looked fantastic, and I genuinely mourn the loss <laughs> of his... Um, blonde hair when he dyed it black again. So I was originally a Sockman bias going into 17. Not to say that I still don't love Sockman and that he's not one of my favorite 17 boys, but something shifted in April or uh, May of last year. And I, Joshua Hong started being on my radar and I denied for months that he was not my 17 bias. Months I lied to people about this. And when I started collecting 17 pr fairly seriously, I was buying mostly Sockman cards at that point. And sometime over the over last summer, I just admitted it was time for me to start collecting Joshua stuff. So I have a couple older cards here. This was all... Um, Love and letter. That was a love and letter repackage. I put away a, uh, a you make my dawn. You make you made my day. Why why MMD? If you want me to know the difference between them, I will never know the difference between them. So, whatever. And then these one. That one is an alone card. I was able to get the alone cards off of Mercari in a set of three. So I didn't have to worry about trying to chase any of them down. Really, it was just. One solid foul swoop of getting the all all one alone <laughs> cards, and it was a fairly reasonable price. Now, um, collecting an Ode cards is a blight on my person because there's just so many of them. Um, I now have a sizable, I've now made a sizable dent in the Ode cards. I'm still missing like two, I think, as of recording this video, but once an ode is done, I'm, I will feel so free. <laughs> this is an ideal cut concert card. Um, I told myself I wasn't really going to be collecting non-album photo cards, but also, um, he's dressed like a little prince. And if you know anything about me, um, if you know me personally, you will know that I am a sucker for a royalty concept. So there was no way I was not going to have that. And that is a going 17, card of his I'm now putting away. Um, as you can see, I have a bunch of these filler cards that I um, cut out the images that I need and put them on instead. So I have an actual um, proper layout and can see what I need and what I have. And that just helps me a lot more with organizing my collection, being reasonable about purchasing for my collection. Um, and it's just like, it looks nicer instead of having a bunch of blank spaces in a binder and it's just it's just really helpful these were cut out from pcy Vern on twitter's charts if you are a new collector and if you're trying to um 
try to make sense of your own collection and see how much you still need and what you don't need. PC Wyvern has been doing the K-pop photo card collecting community a world of good. Like, I think that they should be praised for how much work they that goes into making those charts because it's probably a pain in the ass and pretty much everyone uses them. So I highly recommend going to check uh, their stuff out. I'll put a link in the description about um, all the stuff that they have, but I think they have charts for pretty much every single thing you could possibly imagine for Seventeen, as well as Pentagon stuff, um, a bunch of girl groups, and other things as well. Um, so that's another You Made My Day, Made My Dawn, You Make My Dawn, You Have Made my day <laughs> Joshua um this is a card that I think I've purchased three times by accident because I'm constantly convinced that I didn't get it and then when it arrives in the mail I go to put it away I'm like oh I already have you got it um also the thing about the begin uh, not the begin the an ode cards for Joshua is that sometimes his poses are very different and then sometimes his poses are very similar. So I never know what the hell I have <laughs> and when I'm trying to look for it. Um that's a Hengare going away and I think that is a Hana version. <laughs> um I have no idea what the Hengare um versions look like off the top of my head. All I know is that I acquired them through a group order, and that was that. <laughs> and it feels nice having a unit card for Going 17 of Sockman and Joshua, because it's like the marrying of the beginning of my carrot journey, and then also like where I'm currently at, you know? Um, so it's really nice to have. So I'm anxiously anticipating finding the Joshua Scoops unit card and then I'll be free <laughs> from going 17 stuff which will be really nice oh Blanchua you <laughs> oh so speaking of PCY Vernon like um all the charts that they have for 17 stuff I was under the impression that I was really close to finishing my Blanchua collection and then I discovered the semicolon pre-order benefit non-album inclusion chart and it ruined my life <laughs> seeing what I still needed to get and how much I still had left and I thought I made a pretty sizable dent in Blanchua. I did not. Um, I like these Hengare photos of Joshua so much because all right don't get on my case about this I'm trusting y'all here this is before he got his nose job and it's like one of the last physical evidences we have of pre-nose job Joshua. And I like his nose so much, which is a weird thing to say, but eh, whatever. <laughs> and I think he looks really nice in that button up, which is a, I think it's a Dior button up and it's like $2,000. I don't know why I have that knowledge, but I do. Uh, here is another, you make my... Mm, you make my night. Why not? Different time of day. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to, once I'm putting, once I'm done putting all of these away, I pretty much have all of them. And I hate to say it. I think that these photo cards for you make my dawn, you made my day are kind of boring, <laughs> but I do like the turtleneck leather jacket look that Joshua has in these, but the other ones, I don't, like them as much and I wish I wasn't such a completionist in terms of collecting stuff or else I would have just like not bothered with it but I have completionist hoarder um nerd brain and I wish I didn't have it um and I also told myself I wasn't going to collect any sort of um photo cards from Japanese releases but I am a pink hair enthusiast I have pink hair I've had pink hair for like four years now and so when your bias or someone that you really love from one of your favorite groups has the hair color that you have, you go a little crazy and you buy cards of it, even though you said you weren't going to collect them. But he looks so cute <laughs> with the pink hair and I kind of wish it that he... Uh. So here's my thing. I have lots of thoughts about K-pop boy hair because 
as I just mentioned, I'm a person with fun colored hair and I've been dyeing my hair now for nearly 10 years of my life. And to see him go through the actual proper process of getting his dark brown, almost black hair to bright platinum blonde and at some points actually white blonde during the semicolon era and then they just dyed over it with box black and so there's just no coming back from that until all of his natural root grows back out and they should have just taken the opportunity to do a fun fashion color while he still had that white blonde hair and didn't have like a patchy as fuck color that a lot of k-pop boys end up having because their stylists don't give it enough time to properly take color and not bleaching it right but he had the perfect canvas for a fun color this is the shit i worry about (laughs) um and then here is another an ode card um don't have much to say about that one but i have it (laughs) um so yeah this is a very joshua heavy video um But it's nice to see, like, the progress that I've made with collecting him because I've been, like, putting these cards off, putting them away so I can make a properly, like, full long video of me putting away all my cards. So looking at what my binder looked like versus the stack that I had, it felt like I was making not a whole lot of progress at all. And, like, I was putting I was like checking off, like, my, um, my collection chart and seeing the, the stuff I needed dwindle but it doesn't it doesn't feel real until you actually like put it away and like see it physically you know um so this is a director's cut and then I think I have a director's cut on the other page as well like I put the lenticular away like a little while ago and I have like the little um the what's the it's not I don't know I don't remember the official term for like this is it the slot board the chalkboard whatever with what um clapboard is it a clapboard um oh yeah you can see it when I pulled out the filler that one um so I have a full set now of the director's cut stuff and then with that that's all of the Joshua alone stuff at up at the top which is nice to see you in like all in a row and like I like very much when the cards of each era like line up with the row properly nothing busts my buttons like a boy who has four cards for a uh for a album cycle because then everything is thrown out of whack everything is thrown out of whack um here i am putting another hengere card away i think as of recording this i only have one or two left to go oh and there's another oh i put a finger up who knows what that meant I think maybe I'm getting a penny sleeve or a um, page to put away. Who knows? I recorded this video just like brain off putting shit away (laughs) like a couple weeks ago at this point. And I was watching that new um, pirate show on Netflix. Not Black Sails because that's been around for a long time. But it's like a documentary show where they also um, like reenact shit. I don't know. I like pirates, and I was watching that while I was doing this. And I think that one is another going 17, yeah. Um, which is nice to now have almost a full going 17. So um, similarly to my Pentagon video, where I mentioned that a lot of my albums are acquired secondhand, almost every single one of my albums from 17 is a secondhand purchase with no inclusions. Um, I've worked really, really, really hard <laughs> to get my Seventeen collection to be where it currently is. Like I had gotten into Seventeen properly um, March slash April of 2020, but I was in the process of like finally letting my barriers down into getting into Seventeen around November 2019. It just all finally fell into place when I went to Seoul and just like, guess I'm a carrot now. <laughs> and the first the first 17 album I ever purchased, and I consider this the day I became a carrot, was when I was in Incheon International Airport at my gate waiting to go home. And I bought my first ever in Ode and I got Truth Version 
and I pulled um, a Ming Hao Circle card, and I think a couple, I think it was uh, Suckman, Mingyu, Joshua, and Wanu, I pulled in my truth version. Um, and that's when I became a carrot. And when I got home and I was like, all right, I'm going to like start collecting shit seriously. I went on K-Town for you. I did, I went on all the little websites I normally go on and purchase, um, my K-pop albums. And I bought like a sensible, I bought another ode. I bought a teenage, I bought the orange teenage brand new. Um, and I think, one other one I can't remember right now off the top of my head. And then a month later, everyone seemed to have gotten into 17 during quarantine. Lockdown was a time that everyone became a carrot. And suddenly things that were normally in stock everywhere else were just gone. It was impossible to find new sealed 17 albums within the span of like a month and a half. It was insane. And so since then, I had been just steadily building up, buying all the albums secondhand with no inclusions. So I've now been going back and filling in my collection with what I would have had if I had purchased them new, which is similar, like I said, to what I did with my 17 collection. Oh, and that is like one of my holy grail Joshua cards going down there, that white blonde striped shirt cardigan day everything and that's one of the um the circle cards from an ode i think that's from poet or hope i don't remember but so it's a steady battle of collecting joshua as well as collecting other cards that i really do like because the thing about standing 17 is you don't just have one boy you have like five boys that you really like and my top five constantly rotates about like who is currently in number two, who's in number three. Joshua is pretty much always in my number one now. <laughs> um, when back in the day, by back in the day, I mean a couple months ago, I would have only said that like, haha, like you guys think that Joshua is my bias, but it's really Sockman. Um, that was a lie. <laughs> it was Joshua the whole time. Um, for a while, I felt like a weird sense of embarrassment about biasing Joshua, which I think feels silly now. But um, now I've embraced it. I am a Joshu shu 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 through and through. So here I am filling out some other stuff. Yeah, I think I finished up doing um, my Joshua stuff. So now we're going on into stuff I liked and would have had if I had purchased shit new. So that's a Wanu um, Love and Letter repackage. And I think that one I'm also putting away is someone else um I think that's Sun Quan um where was I oh yeah so like my top five constantly rotates in 17 but for the most part is I'm trying to get a full Joshua collection he's the only one I'm really trying to get a full collection for because I find it unrealistic for me to try to do that for all of my boys and I can really only put that kind of effort into one person at a time and it's just too expensive to do more than one boy um, but my top five these days is Joshua, Hoshi, um, Wanu, Ming Hao, and um, Sockman. And that, and like that pretty much wrote, is my rotation. Um, but sometimes there are days when I'm like, I really want to collect Joshua. Uh, not, I'm always collecting Joshua stuff. I'm um, collecting Vernon or I really want to get stuff for Sun Quan or I really want to get stuff for um, Scoops or and I've been having a uh, June moment recently and stuff like that uh oh so here I have a full Hoshi um director's cut uh set that I was able to grab off of Mercari um Hoshi stuff is pretty expensive I've noticed because the 17 market seems to prioritize um member demand versus era demand so like it's really sad when you see a member who's like really 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 cheap versus a member who's really 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 expensive like recently i saw um jung han stuff going for like 90 dollars, and just a couple months ago i had noticed that stuff was only going for like fuck i think i saw a singular um like boys b card for jung han going for 20 dollars, which i find like 
fairly reasonable because the album is out of print. He had his long blonde hair. Everyone loves Jung Han's long blonde hair, even if he's not like in your bias line. But then I was seeing like four of his cards, pretty like regularly able to find cards on Mercari for like $90. It was insane. So um, what my my point on that one was that sometimes Hoshi stuff is harder to find and it's a little bit more expensive and he was the other one I was considering doing a full collection for, but I think I'm just going to make peace with not having, um, a ton of Hoshi stuff. Um, but I find myself gravitating a lot towards getting stuff for Ming Hao because boy knows his angles and he's always styled beautifully and he is photo cards are always I was gonna say like his photo cards are very compelling but they are he he's he's really good at taking shots of himself and knowing how to pose and how he wants to present himself and there he is <laughs> in going 17 um so yeah I, I like getting stuff for him too uh so the rest of my collection I have it separated into Joshua and I have it separated into everyone else so I'm kind of trying to do Joshua and at least one of each for forever because I have I've managed to acquire 17's entire catalog including all the versions for all the albums I'm a crazy person I recognize this so now I'm trying to get um what I what would have come in those albums if I had purchased them new and it doesn't really and I'm trying to do it like um for the boys that I do really like but it's okay if I get it for boys that I don't necessarily um collect all the time just to like have a full collection of what I would have had so there was that um long blonde Jung Han that I was talking about I got him through someone selling a boys b album which they listed as having no inclusions and then the seller asked me if I wanted inclusions and I was like yeah I would and I had the option between boys b Joshua and boys b Jung Han and as I mentioned I think in my Mercari video um, that I went with the long blonde Jung Han because I knew that that card is very coveted and I also covet it because his blonde hair was incredible and why wouldn't I want to have um, physical proof of Jung Han's long blonde hair so I took that opportunity to get it because I feel like a Joshua one would pop up um, eventually and it would probably be cheaper than just buying that Jung Han card um, outside of also getting it in an album purchase um, so I'm flipping through trying to put stuff away and I th who was that I don't know I'm looking at the video really tiny on my screen so I um, think I'm trying to find a spot to just put that one away in um so the only 17 thing I'm trying to collect proper OT 13 for for an album cycle is for semicolon simply because oh yeah that's that's Hoshi um simply because it was really reasonable in terms of the stuff that came with those albums um not including the actual photo card like not including the non-photo card stuff because it was two things per member and I think that's a really reasonable amount to collect after seeing what the rest of um 17's stuff is so like versus so you have an ode which is 20 cards per member versus semicolon which is all um which is 26 cards total for every single boy. <laughs> and I found that really reasonable. And I had joined um, several group orders for semicolon and tried to get into a fan set myself. So like getting the cards wasn't hard. So these were some Hengere cards that I got of Hoshi Wanu and um, Ming Hao. And I thought the Hengere cards were really beautifully shot, specifically that version's cards. Um, because I love a romantic kind of like a, like a romanticized, like hot summer night, like moment kind of thing. I'm a summer baby and I always looked forward to summer vacation as a kid, as we all do, even though I fucking hate the heat, but there's like a certain kind of, um, feeling that you don't get anymore being an adult from yearning for summer. So I really like that shoot. Um, that is a fan sign Sockman card. I really liked his silverish hair. And 
so I I snagged it. <laughs> I snagged it for that one. Um, that is a Falling Flower Wanu card that I got. Uh, I really like the pink suits. I, you, I don't know if you're picking up yet that I really like the color pink. <laughs> um, like, pink suit Joshua. I loved that look from the old shoots. And now Wanu's in a pink suit. I'm gonna take it where I can get it <laughs> in terms of pink stuff. Um, and I think that is some more in Ode stuff that I'm about to be putting away. Excuse me while I take a sip of coffee. Um, so I'm trying to organize it based on, of course, the um, versions. And you'll see that full page of begin cards. I don't know how that happened, but it happened to me. Be careful because you too could be a person who has too many begin cards when you didn't want to have so many begin cards. Um, these ones, I think I was trying when I was still kidding to myself that I was trying to collect, um, Hoshi. I think I entertained the idea for approximately two weeks, um, back in January. <laughs> I entertained that idea. Um, these ones, I think, were from when I, I don't know how I acquired those. Um, that's a great question. I think it's because I when I bought a couple versions of an ode that I still needed in my to fill out my um album collection, those were the ones that came in. But sometimes like this stuff is so long ago now for a couple months ago for me, um, that I don't remember when I bought certain albums and when I was filling stuff out. So whatever happens, happens with these. Um I loved Ming Hao's silver hair. I wish that it had stuck around a little bit longer, but also I know that maintaining silver hair is so hard, <laughs> but I'm glad that there is a uh, photo card evidence of that um, silver hair moment. And that is a unit PC. I don't know what that is specifically for, but it's very clearly a beginning of the career scoops and Hoshi. So if anyone knows what that card is, can you please let me know what that is? Because I think they look absolutely ridiculous and I love it. Um, let's see what else I'm going to be putting away. I think we're nearing the end of the photo card stuff and we're going to be transitioning into other album inclusions and other like fan good stuff. Um, we'll see what I'm fiddling with. And in the meantime, I'm going to take another sip of coffee. Oh yeah, th yeah, this is just semicolon um, non-PC album inclusions. I'm not I'm not sure if I'm going to try to collect the OT13 for the semicolon non-PC stuff, but I'm close enough to it that I feel like I just should. And the stuff is fairly easy to find still. Um like there's plenty of stuff that I'm still selling of my extras of the semicolon non-PC stuff and that people just aren't buying, so I'm assuming that it's still out there. Which speaking of, if you want Jung Han, um Vernon or Dino stuff of everything, I'm selling it. <laughs> Please help me clear out my apartment. <laughs> do, do, do. Also, sorry for the crunchy sounds. My dog has a toy with him right now. He's crunching and munching away. Um, so, yeah, I haven't really been keeping track of every one that I have. Um, so that's June, and there's scoops I'm putting away of these mini cards. These ones are also a bitch and a half to try to sell and send properly if you're not very specific about the kind of cardboard that you're trying to protect it in because it's so thin. It's thin enough that it'll bend a little bit if you just try to put it into a top loader raw. That was horrible. Oh my god. Um, if you just try to put it into a top loader without like a penny sleeve around it. Um, and there's also not that many penny sleeves that fit the bigger cards because they're an awkward size. And also you'd have to buy a, spe a special kind of top loader to fit those in. Um, so, oh, and here's some 17 carat postcards. This, I put, th I did this putting away video before I had gotten that Mercari haul that I had posted. So it's not the full OT13 dark and light um, photo cards, postcard thingies that came in 17 carat. So sorry that you won't see all of that, um, but also... A saving grace of not making this video any longer than it actually needs to be. So there I am just putting away one last um, 
thing or it's me realizing that I had that Wanu and then I had to put it that I didn't need it. Um, these are some of the kit version cards of Joshua and some other people. Oh, and Minghao, not Joshua was in the other stuff. I put that away. This is Minghao stuff. Um, don't know why I bought it, but I have it. Um, and that one is you, I think, yeah, those are kit versions of the You Make Made My Dawn Day <laughs> cards. Um, I didn't really know that kit versions of albums were a thing until fairly recently when I started buying um, albums through like K-Town For You and seeing those actually get listed here. Because in my experience, I live in the New York metropolitan area, so I have a fairly easy access to stores that sell K-pop albums physically. And the normal and the one I would normally go to in Manhattan um, never really had the kit versions in stock or they were there and I never really processed that's what they were. Um, so I didn't even know that was really an option for stuff until I started buying directly through K-Town for you. Um, and I'm trying not to get those because I, whatever, I don't even know what comes in the kit. And I don't need to find out because if I find out, I'm going to want it. So I'm just going to not, <laughs> you know, make that any of my business. Oh, yeah, so just putting away those 17 karat cards now. Um... I'm glad that I have all of them, honestly, because I feel like 17 Karat is going to be harder and harder and harder and harder to find just as time goes on. So, oop, there's some dog crunching going on. <laughs> He's getting, Miles is getting a little antsy. He can tell that um, I'm doing something I'm not paying attention to him. <laughs> So I think that the the dark concepts for Seventeen Carat was so goofy because they just have a bunch of dweebs. They're trying to make a bunch of these dweebs look like hard and edgy. Um, these ones I think are boys B. Yeah, I think these ones are the boys B photo cards, which I love these shots. I think these are some great shots. I love um an album like photo shoot concept that is very candid and is very and like I understand the whole point was like youth in the like youth nostalgia for like boys B and specifically eventually love and letter. Miles, can we not play with the crunchiest toy in existence right now? Um and I like those kinds of album concepts that have that kind like almost a little bit rock and roll like I'm a dirt bag. Um I'm a dirtbag kid in like my high school emo band and we're going to take an edgy photo shoot like just around small town suburbia and like try to look really hard for our um, MySpace page. Like that's kind of what these ones remind me of. And also they're just like some really well composed shots like the one of them on the stairs and the one of them like all holding their thumbs together. If I wasn't such a completionist hoarder, um... I would probably frame these and put them up because I like the shots that much. Also, Jung Han in his um, infamous Enfant Terrible, and pardon for my terrible French accent, um, shirt that is like fandom famous at this point. And just putting those away. I'm so happy that these like fit so neatly into um, these two pocket pages because it drives me insane when things are just, just awkward enough of a size that they just don't fit well or they just or it's like one or two millimeters too big or comically small for the pockets hey miles i have a really great idea what if we played with the toy that wasn't crunchy and played with lamb chop instead there we go sorry about that i did apologize for the dog sounds ahead of time so whatever um i'm going to probably eventually move that joshua alone stuff into the joshua section of my collection but not just yet <laughs> um let's see what i'm gonna be putting away next oh so we have some teenage stuff so i have scoops i have june and i have um i thought i had someone else oh that's just a poster from teenage as well um I recently got the Joshua Standy um, from a recent Mercari um, purchase, so I'm really excited to have his his stuff um, for teenage soon. 
I don't know if anyone else has noticed that like teenage hard like teenage stuff is really hard to find right now um not even like the standees just the cards themselves I've seen I've been keeping my eye out for the Joshua teenage cards now for a couple weeks and I only have the side the horizontal one um from the orange version and I also just like did a cursory look for the other members to see what the status of that was for anyone else and it seems like it's really hard to find the non-orange cards of any boy um if you have any insight (laughs) into that please let me know in the comments um I like to think that I kind of have a handle on what the 17 market is like now for photo card and album inclusion buying, but some stuff is mystifying. All right, so this is the season's greetings um, photo cards. So it's like easy to have OT13 for the stuff where you get photo cards for every single boy and there's one version of each. So I'm happy to just plug these bad boys away and like just set it and forget it. Don't have to worry about um, getting rid of any of those. Ah, white blonde Joshua. Thank God. (laughs) The light of my life. um, The moon and my stars. Blonde Joshua. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I don't really have much to say about the season's greetings photo cards. Except that um, I have lots of opinions and thoughts about the direction of this season's greetings and the package design itself. Um... I am by no means a professional graphic designer, but I am an artist and I kind of have an eye for um, design and stuff because I did study art in college. (laughs) Um, And I liked the direction they were trying to take the season's greetings in, but the package design was really bad and I think that they need to talk to the person who did the um editing on some of the shots in the season's greetings because they are so goddamn tonal um there's not not nearly enough contrast in those shots for the black and white of those images and I think I'm gonna be putting them away there and like you can see more of that when we get to it but I enjoyed this more mature like chic and elegant look for 17 because they are all in their mid-20s now and early 20s because 98 and 99 line are still babies to me um but they're older now of course they're not going to want to do a super cutesy um like bright concept like they were so used to doing back in the day and they want to change it up and move in different directions but can I get (laughs) something a little bit more exciting than an unreadable font in a horribly laid out gray box there is a way to make it look sleek and minimal and classy than how the package design looked and for how expensive it is and like I don't know what goes on. I, I, I'm i not I'm speaking out of my ass here. I'm by no means an expert in corporate whatever in terms of entertainment. But it just is like you have recently got acquired by Big Hit. You're now high beat or whatever the fuck it is. And what's going on behind the scenes that you can't contract the people who used to do the graphic design for the other season's greetings which are really smartly designed and like really fun and exciting um what happened there (laughs) oh yeah so here are some of the shots that i was talking about the black and white like really well composed shots here i think that it's um like it's a it some of the poses are really nice and unique and the photographer really knew what they were doing in terms of getting these shots but also I need y'all to bump up the contrast like just a little bit on these like just a little bit I'm acting asking for a little bit more white balance a little less gray (laughs) but you know you win some you lose some and the boys still look beautiful that's just me being nitpicky and knowing a little bit what I'm talking about (laughs) when it comes to um stuff and I don't mean to sound like negative or whatever and it's not any fault of the boys is of course this is entirely a corporate thing and a um managed and not necessarily a management thing just like 
how Pletus decides to go around handling their business. Um, Pletus, don't come for my ass. I love everything that you do. Don't do anything. <laughs> um, here's me also trying desperately to not have an un just having like one card on one page and just trying to just fit things as reasonably as I possibly can. So I think that was all the um season's greeting stuff I was putting away in my boy binder. So this is a fan good. This was from a Joshua birthday event, um, a cafe event that I think was happening in LA. Um and my friend um Isabel from Paybell very kindly ordered stuff from this person um because i think that the person who was organizing the fan cafe the cafe event for his birthday um was selling overflow goods or just selling goods in general so you didn't have to actually physically go to the cafe event at the time which i think is a great move to do regardless um i also think going organizing a cafe event in the middle of a pandemic is dicey um and I think it's a little bit irresponsible but also I'm not going to if someone is going to go ahead and organize this event anyway and they're going to have an overflow of goods anyway because it's not like they're pre-ordering the items or whatever I'm going to try to acquire it and also I like having fan goods because they're beautifully well designed and also it's a little piece of fandom history um And I think that we should preserve as much of the fandom history as we possibly can at any given time. And that is the ore from Going 17. That, for some reason, was a bitch and a half to find. Um, (laughs) For some reason, when I was looking for the Going 17 ores and stuff, it was just like, everything was just like the unit ones. Or for people I just wasn't collecting. Like, I was seeing some Quan and Dino everywhere. Um, this is some stuff. Those are the Polaroids that come in the Love and Letter repackage. I Love and Letter repackage was like one of my White Whale 17 albums to get for my collection. Every single time I saw it go on sale, it was snatched up before I could put in a buy request in. And the people who sold those to me, they were not doing album inclusions, but I think they forgot that the that there was a big Polaroid in the pocket when you open up the front cover. So I got Jung Han and I think I, that was Dino. Um, I think they just forgot <laughs> that they were in there. So I'm kind of happy to reap the benefits from someone forgetting that it came with something. Um, those are the Audrey Nice stickers that came with it. And then the We Are Pletus, come work, come audition for us. And that was the season's uh, greetings. Um, the sticker packs, I'm just going to keep it in the envelope there. I don't particularly feel like putting them all in their own little nine pocket because they're die cut and I don't want to accidentally bend someone's legs because knowing me I would absolutely just destroy a thing like that um let's see what else I have because we are nearing the end (laughs) of stuff that I have to put away Mm -mm. I think I'm now just looking to see if I have room for anything or if I'm forgetting something or if I'm just flipping things to get close ah okay I think I was saving something for last yes here we go here we go here we go so like I mentioned earlier that I thought it was fairly reasonable for me to attempt to collect OT 13 for semicolon era because it's a reasonable amount of photo cards so I'm going to be putting away those cards and I will hopefully be completing my OT 13 set of um semicolon very soon I'm missing just one more card i think i'm missing one sun kwan and my friend has to put in the mail for me um and then i'll be free from it and i'm just think i'm just organizing it by age order off screen so that one i forget what the pre-order benefit was off the top of my head for the um the cards of like joshua with the striped shirt and the blonde hair I forget what fan sign that was for, but I think everyone's fits during that part of the music video that they took those pre-order benefit cards for is the some of the best looks in the music video. And I'm really happy that they did fan cards of those because I loved Hoshi's look and I loved Ming Hao's look. And I'm glad that I have those cards now. So here's me just filling in the gaps. Um, also, I have a bone to pick with Mr. Um, Vernon. His... 
zero angles, zero angle difference in those photo cards to the point where I've repurchased it a couple times because I thought that I didn't have it and then I did and I'm selling those. But Hoshi also is an offender of this. Your pose and your face is not different enough in these photo cards for me to be able to tell the difference between what they are. I have the optic permanence of a baby. I'm not going to remember that there's a subtle difference here. <laughs> um, so now I'm just rearranging it because there's a woozy that I have to put where he belongs. Um, woozy, kill in the game. Different pose, different expression. Thank you, King. We bask in the glory of your everything. Um, yeah, I'm just like moving some stuff around because I don't know why I didn't have stuff in age order initially. So we're going to get a little bit of putting away and reorganization here. Um, also, shout out to The Eight for also having a different pose in these. <laughs> um, Sockman. Also, two completely different poses from two different angles. Thanks, bud. You care me. Ming ha uh not Ming Hao, Ming Yu, also killing the game here. Give me a head tilt, giving me a slight little bit of difference. I'm holding a finger up because I have to go get another nine pocket. Um mm -mm. and another sip of coffee from me. <laughs> Ooh. Mm. Sorry, that was a big stretch on my end. I've been talking for 46 minutes straight. <laughs> And actually finding things to talk about during this whole thing. So I'm happy to uh, be able to just not shut the fuck up <laughs> for 45 minutes. There we go with Sun Quan. That's the one Sun Quan that I have. And I have another one um, that will be eventually coming towards me. Vernon. Thin fucking ice, dude. Thin fucking ice for having the same face and expression. Slightly different with the mic. Um... Anyway, if anyone is still searching for that one Vernon card, I will happily give that to you. And Dino, let's see if you're an offender here, bud. No! And we also have a completely different outfit. Completely different outfit. Differences. I love variety. <laughs> I love range. So thanks, King. Future K-pop Lee Chan. Killing the game here. Oh yeah, here's those, those um, the fan sign pre-order cards I was just talking about. Um... I love these looks a lot, so I'm happy to have uh, photo cards of them. I don't, I'm not particularly going to be seeking out the other ones for that. Oh, the Vernon one was a Hanukkah present from a friend who had an extra of the card and just gave it to me. So yeah, that is everything I had to put away. My 17 collection is now vast and massive. Um, more Joshua stuff got put away and I'm all done. All right. Thank you guys so much. Oh, and I'm still talking and the video ended. So I'm going to put some photos here. Anyway, thank you guys so much for sitting through all this. If you sat through all of it, I really appreciate it. Um, I'm going to be coming back soon with some more videos in the meantime. All right. Catch you all on the flip side. Bye.